Stand by. Welcome to the show. Welcome back. It's Friday, September 21st, 2018. This is Mysterious Forces Live. Welcome back. I appreciate you tuning in. I know that you have other things that you could be doing, but hey, you're doing this. And we appreciate it. Thank you so much for being here. It's been a wild week. I uh, had my birthday last weekend and went out of town to Jerome, Arizona, and stayed at the Connor Hotel, which is... And uh, <clears throat> I attempted to do a little bit of ghost hunting, and I didn't really have any luck because the tape recorder that I had put new batteries in and tried out here at the house did not work once I got there. And uh, I was having video problems as well. And not only that, we had a major car problem on the way back and got stuck on the side of the road on the mountain uh, coming back. And luckily enough, a firefighter stopped by and uh, he helped us out and helped us get down the mountain so that we could get the car repaired. So it was a lot of uh, drama involved with Jerome. And uh, I don't know, I went back. But uh, there were definitely uh, technical issues with my ghost hunting. But uh, we'll see how it goes next time. For tonight's show, I want to introduce someone uh, who's been working with me behind the scenes. His name is Michael Moriarty. And he's with uh, Pursuing X. He's one of the partners of Pursuing X. And they're a marketing firm. And uh, they've been working with some uh, well-known ufologists and other folks uh, that uh, have marketing needs. And I've been working with them. And then Michael's kind of gotten involved with this show, kind of producing behind the scenes. And we had a little bit of a discussion. And we've decided to bring Michael on to the show as kind of a co-host and uh, someone that will be here to help provide color commentary, someone I can talk to and kind of bounce off of, and he can interact with the guests as well. And I th think that it's going to add a different dynamic to the show, so, uh, probably p give it, make it a little more interesting in terms of conversation. So, Michael, welcome to the show. I'm so glad you're here, and thanks for, for doing this. <laughs> Hey, thank you for having me, Natasha. And it's uh, it's cool to be on the other side of the of the curtain. Um, since other than just being in the chat and going through the process of getting everything set up and all the all the growing pains we've had, but they've been good overall. So it's been a pleasure, and uh, thank you very much for having me on. Yeah, can you tell the audience a little bit about pursuing X and how this has come together within the last year or so? Absolutely. Um, Pursuing X really started with my wife handling uh, a prominent ufologist account a couple of years ago. Um, I saw that Linda Moulton Howe needed, uh, had advertised for a social media person on a part-time basis. And I was super excited and uh, sent it to my wife, half jokingly, but hoping that she would uh, reach out and see what happens because she had a lot of corporate clients and her plate was pretty full. Uh, but she humored me and sent out the application and then spoke with Linda and got the job. And at the time, she really didn't know how prominent Linda was. And I was just beside myself. Uh, yeah, so that's where it started was just with uh, handling her social channels. And then we traveled to the 70th anniversary of the Roswell UFO Festival and got to meet a lot of other people and got to see do some behind the scenes action. Um, I got to set up Linda's computer for her presentation and was kind of thrust in the, <clears throat> just kind of thrust in the job, uh, handling that and handling sound guys and dealing with the personalities, all the different ones. Um, yeah, sound, yeah. sound engineers are, can be uh, <laughs> called personalities. Yeah, they're all, uh, they were these concert hippie guys that would, uh, that set up shows. So, you know, they're particular in their own right and but however very talented mm -hmm. <laughs> just learning how to deal with the talent side and the technical side uh, like 10 30 at night before the show was was an experience where you draw on a bunch of little things where but you've never really done it before 
Uh, also, you know, just getting to meet Nick Pope, Richard Dolan, uh, his wife, Tracy, his fiance at the time. Yeah. Uh, it was Richard's birthday. So getting to kind of just hang out with those guys and uh, just see them as a, as a person, see the human side of it rather than just the, the presentation side, which I mean, I adore and respect uh, those people, but um, to, to be on, to be on that side of the fence, it was almost like UFO fantasy camp for me. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Uh, I've gotten to be friends with Richard and Tracy, and I know you have as well. And, uh, you know, I've done nothing but brag about Richard to everyone that I know in terms that, in terms of, uh, he's the real deal. And the guy that he appears to be on camera or when he's given a lecture, that's who he really is. And yeah. uh, he's very uh, serious about what he does, but he has a good sense of humor as well. He's really funny, and uh, I think he's he's just real down to earth for someone as knowledgeable as he is, and and I like that about him. He's not there's no arrogance there. You're right, Natasha. He is such a professional, and at the same time, uh, he is extremely genuine. And uh, getting to to work with them, and you you see that um, for for him and Tracy as well, as you know, a and he is funny, uh, <laughs> but. Uh, He's so witty and smart. Um, he has a memory that is like a computer, and he will cut you to the bone if you're uh, out of line. Oh, yeah, yeah, he certainly will. You know, I had kind of a moment uh, like what you were talking about the first year at the UFO Congress here. And uh, let's see, this was my second year, so this was last year, uh, last February 2017. And uh, I had been hanging around Richard's table and uh, we were talking and they were kind of wrapping it up. And here comes Stanton Friedman. And so I'm standing there and I'm like, wow, it's like Stanton Friedman and Richard Dolan are getting ready to chat. And I'm standing right here, you know, and it was kind of weird. It was like um, they reminded me of like uh, opposing generals on a battlefield. It was a little more formal. Like there was no hug or no really warm greeting. It was like, hello, Stanton. And it was like, hello, Richard. And they didn't really embrace each other. They kind of shook hands and said it was good to see each other, but it was a lot more businesslike. And I, you know, I thought these guys had crossed paths so many times that surely they had, you know, shared a meal together somewhere or talked and, you know, kind of bonded in, in, in that way. But, and I and I'm just talking about strictly my observation. It didn't appear to be that way. It was a lot more business like. I was surprised. Sure, I noticed that as well. Um, but then there's as as well as researchers that are personal friends, and um, perhaps they only see each other on certain travel circuits or certain shows that they share. And you get to see the other side of it too, where it's been you know it's been a year and they get to catch up. But you you definitely see some of the division in the ufo community if you've been to let's say more than two two events yeah um that's for sure and i learned that this year going to contact in the desert it was uh, a completely different experience than the flavor of the international ufo congress here that uh, alejandro rojas and uh, his organization uh, do that here in phoenix and uh, so every, all the other conventions are going to kind of be based against that for me because that was my first experience. And uh, it'll be different this next year because they're expanding and they're moving to downtown to a much bigger venue. And I, I expect the International UFO Congress to uh, grow and be comparable in size to contact in the desert. Maybe not this next year, but within the next two or three years, I think it'll get to that level. I thought Alejandro put on an excellent event, and I mean, it was a packed house for the the A-list talent that he brought in, and he's just a cool guy, I and mean, he's a very gracious guy, absolutely. Um, I think I we've met him at, at Roswell as well, actually, and uh, we've, you see him along the circuit, and he's he's always been a cool guy. Yeah, they work really hard. I've seen a little bit of the behind the scenes there. And uh, they work really hard at that. So if you're listening to this and you get a chance to go to the International UFO Congress, do that as well. Speaking of conventions, on October 5th and 6th, there is something called DisclosureCon. And that's something is in Pine Top, Arizona.
I reality collide under one roof. Just one. Actually, it'll be multiple roofs. But uh, Doc Skinner, 1028 Productions, is uh, putting this on. I'm going to have a table there. Uh, is Pursuing X going to have a table there? I don't think we're going to have a table, but we're going to be pretty much uh, canvassing the event. Uh, we have a couple clients that will be there for sure. Uh, you, as well as uh, the author of The Stingwisher, Lauren Blowers. So we int we expect to be shooting a lot of uh, film, a lot of pictures, having a lot of fun. Um, definitely going to be uh, taking over, not taking over, but hanging out at your booth quite a bit. Um, I already stole some stickers from your from you, so don't worry about any at your table. You're safe. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, I'm glad you got some of the stickers. They're these stickers, and uh, I'm going to have those at the table. I'm going to try to have some shirts. I'm not completely sure, but I am also going to have this. And uh, that's a Jackson uh, Roswell, Rhodes Roswell. Uh, Randy Rhodes had, uh, had Jackson design some guitars. There were only 120 of these guitars made. That's uh, an aluminum body and uh, aluminum uh, head with tuning keys and uh, crop circles on the fret markers. And uh, I'm going to have it set up so you can come back and take a selfie with that guitar, a photo op at the table. So come and meet me in person and learn more about the show. I'm going to be shooting some interviews there as well. We're going to try to live stream, but I think Jerome also taught me to be prepared for a bad Wi-Fi connection. Pine Top is way, way up in the mountains, and I can't really be sure of the quality of internet connection there. So just know that if live streaming is not happening, it's just because of the connection, but we will be filming uh, behind the scenes and dropping those videos onto Facebook and onto YouTube and uh, there will be content uh, coming out. So uh, just uh, we'll let you know in the moment how it goes with the streaming there from Disclosure Con. Uh, do you know who else is going to be at Disclosure Con? Um, do you have a, you know, a few people that will be there? Uh, Andrew Bassagio is going to have an event. Um, Mike Barra from Ancient Aliens fame will be there. Uh, See, Tim Cohen is going to have a presentation, David Loomis, Josh Toms, uh, Brooks Agnew as well. Oh, that's cool. I'm just looking at the chat room. No I can worries. finally see it. Hey, uh, Doc, Doc Skinner is going to... Oh, Go yeah. Well, well, Doc Skinner's everywhere. Um, he's blowing up, but it's his event, and uh, we're very honored to be able to uh to hang out at his show uh such a cool guy we had him on uh, a few episodes ago and he was very patient with us through our our technical difficulty growth yeah yeah i think we're going to have him uh back on closer to the time of the convention awesome very cool uh what's the progress with the puppet the puppet is, has, um, he has sculpted it as I shared pictures on Facebook and uh, they were going to cast it and uh, then start painting it. I haven't seen any new photographs, but I'll get a hold of Scott uh, this week and see if he has any photos for me. And uh, as we get closer, we'll probably have Scott back on. Uh, hopefully the puppet will be here before Disclosure Con so that we can go have some fun with that. And uh, maybe we'll be able to do some sort of ahead. contest for his name, uh, his or her yes. at the event. Yeah. Yeah, that would be cool as well. Yeah, I want to integrate uh, the puppet into the costume contest uh, somehow. So my mind has Absolutely. been working in that direction. And uh, so hello to Doc Skinner. Hello to Jiggy from Paranormal Hood. Jiggy, you need to come on my show. I came on your show. And uh, who, I, I do have some people that I can talk about that have committed to coming on the show, but I don't have a date locked in. But Ryan Sprague has said that he would come on in October. That's someone that to look awesome. forward to. Yeah. I'm uh, looking some, forward to that. 
yeah, somewhere in the skies uh, is his podcast, and he does a great podcast. He's written a book, and uh, he's um, he's going to be a great guest. And John Greenwald uh, Jr. at some point is going to come on. I'm in contact with John, and uh, we're going to talk about some of his new work. And as soon as I get the dates locked in for those people, I'm going to let you know. Uh, Sunday night this week is Robert Lindsay, who uh, I was supposed to have on when uh, I was ill a couple weeks ago. And uh, he was uh, from season 10 of Face Off on Sci-Fi. And uh, he's a really interesting guy. Uh, he's, uh, he is someone that marches to his own drumbeat. And uh, he'll be perfect. really interesting to talk to. What were you going to say, Michael? I said perfect. Uh, that's he'll, he'll, he'll fit right in with our show then. So I know that you talked a little bit about how Pursuing X kind of got into this. Can you tell me a little bit more about your personal experiences with the paranormal and what got you interested in this field in general, which is maybe that, that bigger picture of why you're here? Uh, sure. Um, you know, it's one of those uh, things where I've I've seen a few UFOs. They weren't, I mean, they were pretty profound experiences for me. It wasn't like a, a ship landed in front of me per se, or I went into some uh, wormhole in my backyard. But when I was in my early 20s, I was camping with my parents uh, in rural South Dakota. And my dad and I saw something that looked like a satellite or a star and it started to fly at incredible speeds and paces and it was just astonishing to watch and we watched military jets chase it until it just poofed into space so having seen something like that it, it just uh, really uh, accelerated my pursuit of that knowledge and, and interest in it um, I was, uh, even when early internet days, dial-up days, I mean, I was looking at UFO stuff and look, digging through all this information and reading about Denver International Airport as it was being constructed and right. things Super like that creepy. in my area. Exactly, exactly. Very strange stuff. So, and, and, uh, and researchers such as uh, Linda and then even Richard in the early 2000s when I started learning about him. So... That was always there, and then you know, I've had a recent experience a few years ago that was uh, something that was even closer. It, again, I don't want to say it was; it's definitely an alien thing, um, but I just don't believe it was a man-made thing of what happened or what I, what I experienced. And it's just a difficult thing to talk about because there's so much ridicule, even in even in the community itself. Um, but at the same time. I've I've heard some pretty amazing stories, so mine's pretty pretty tame. Yeah, I'm I've been fascinated by experience or stories the whole time, and uh, I'm probably well not probably I am definitely more discerning and uh, probably more skeptical in my older age than I was. Uh, when I was younger, I had a tendency to kind of just soak everything up and kind of believe it all uh, when I was younger. But uh, I don't know, it, it, time, experience, and I think insight and my growth as a person has kind of helped me sort through some of the crap that's out there and uh, just kind of extract the, the really useful things or which basically are more leaning towards science. For yes. me, science evidence, but you know, I many experiencer stories are compelling. Uh, Travis Walton, Whitley Strieber, uh, those are two prime examples of people that I believe their stories and they're incredible stories. But uh, I, I totally believe them. I, I don't think those people are lying. I agree, Natasha. Um, after having met Travis um, and just such a genuine person. I, I just don't believe he would have any reason to to have a story like that. And the debunkers really haven't taken his story apart. And they've tried for, what, 40 years now. Um, yeah. He's also the real deal. And I agree with you. Um, I was very 
uh, too, I think too open-minded in my early days and in your younger days, but I think you start to separate what's a great story and between what is something that can't be explained. And again, going back to the re relying on the scientific method and relying on the, the known things that we have. Um, with that being said, though, I, I believe there's just things in this universe that cannot be explained yet, and we're not as smart as we think we are, perhaps. No, indeed. We have a lot to learn. And uh, I think that's part of the fun of exploring this topic, quite frankly, is I think we're on the verge of uh, hopefully new information or a new level of seriousness in terms of broader acceptance of the topic. Yeah, um, yes. I was hoping that the To The Stars Academy and their work was going to be the start of that, but I'm skeptical of Tom DeLong and his work. Uh, that's I, I, I don't hate Tom DeLong. I don't know him. I've never met him, but I'm just skeptical until I see more evidence brought forth and sure. uh, something actually newsworthy, uh, you know, that's like I'm not interested in buying somebody's T-shirts and books, uh, you know, d don't purport to have uh, earth shattering news and then, you know, kind of give a little bit out and then want to sell books and t-shirts I, I just i'm not digging that too well but well, you know i i ahead. understand i guess i understand from from a business owner standpoint from a marketing standpoint what he's trying to do and how he's trying to get the message out if you want to believe him and and i know that it's a controversial thing um and i know he's made an ass of himself online in a couple interviews however i think with that said i do happen to believe that um something's trying to be disclosed through him now whether it's an altruistic thing or not is another part of the story but he does have a several um, highly highly intelligent and respected people in their in their fields of of intelligence and counterintelligence and physics um, and genetics so I I think there's something to be said in what they're trying to do and no one else before has even said that they've had material that they don't believe the isotopes come from planet Earth, let alone that they're going to analyze them. So I will give him credit for that. Um, now, you can look at a Mylar balloon that's not an UFO. You uh -huh. can look at the Joe Rogan podcast. Right. It, it's pretty, pretty horrible. Um, but at the same time, I, there's maybe that's misinformation or disinformation and that we have to, uh, to, quote a, to quote an interview, we have to use our our discernment to understand uh, what's real and what's not. I do know that he surrounds himself with smart people and that's always the good sign of a, a smart leader. And if you've read the, the Peter Lavenda's book on the subject, mm -hmm. I think it's very deep and it's very thorough in at least presenting the notion of a cargo cult idea and that even maybe something didn't shape our genetics or has built the pyramids and told us what to do since the beginning of time or for millions of years. However, maybe they have popped, stopped by once or twice and an advanced culture that was already tracking the stars, that was already understanding the earth would be able to make a monumental leap from that. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I, I hope that there is more to follow and uh... Absolutely. I love the videos. Um, oh, yeah. No, the videos are great. I And I love hearing the pilots. And, you know, someone was, you know, kind of uh, trying to debunk that, saying, oh, they don't speak that way. And I'll, when they witness phenomena like that, then right. protocol kind of goes out the window and the emotion takes over in the moment. And that seems completely authentic to me. I agree. And I think that Although we're talking about a hundred million dollar piece of equipment and millions of dollars of training, you're talking about a 20 something year old kid who just had his mind blown. These guys are expert observers. In fact, the best ones on the planet. Um, let's look past the young pilots and let's look at Commander David Fravers credentials. I mean, he's the real deal. If we weren't talking Indeed. about the object and what it did, we're talking about the commander of the Black Aces. Let's right. just let that sink in for a moment. 
Yeah, that's right. Yeah, these are people with uh, completely respectable careers that are stepping forward. And uh, I, I think that uh, kind of the, the, the weight of their careers, the, the seriousness of their careers kind of lends gravitas to the uh, story and to the veracity of the witness testimony. What I want to think? shift. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to ask you, what do you think about the idea of, of consciousness tying itself into that and, and Jeremy Corbell's new movie, Skinwalker Ranch, and the, the fact that the Department of Intelligence, as well as Robert Bigelow's team, was investigating there using the scientific method and, and had some, an entity there that was outsmarting them every step of the way? I think my overall opinion... <clears throat> I have I have levels of opinion. I think Jeremy Corbell is a great uh, filmmaker. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I think he has a great style, and I like the way he put it together. Um, it's a smart movie. It's a relevant movie in terms of style and content. Um, I said it before on another show. I was a little disappointed that there was no real footage of phenomena as it happened. Just, um, yeah. um, but you know, I'm like everyone else. I kind of want the red meat of that kind of thing, right? Like if sure. we're telling ghost stories, I want to see footage, you know, that's what kept everyone hanging on the edge of their, for, you know, something like ghost hunters when that was on and, oh. you know, you just want to see something and, uh, yeah. but it, it's a great story. And I think it's also a great, uh, look at George Knapp as well. Yes. Um, I think, you know, there, there surely is some footage of phenomena and Bigelow is probably sitting on it or the, you know, uh, Homeland Security is sitting on it. Well, perhaps, it's, it's, perhaps it's still classified, uh, just like a lot of those the gun camera videos that we haven't seen yet, because I'm sure this has happened more than three times or and more than on just that piece of property in, in Utah as well. So. Perhaps it's just the process of declassification or, you know, patriots that are trying to uncover the truth and still protect us. Yes, I agree. I, the more I learn, I'm also starting to take on a philosophy of uh, the fact that we live in a multidimensional universe. And I think a lot of things aren't coming across time. Maybe they are coming across time. I don't think they're coming across space in the in a three dimensional context. I think that there are uh, places where this interdimension interdimensionality uh, crosses over. I think there are something like portals where phenomena could come through, and I think that's that one day. Uh, I think math and science and quantum mechanics. And uh, the high strangeness factor of physics will explain these things in scientific terms. But uh, it's going to still seem magical to us at our level of understanding until we get more verifiable data. Can you believe that it's 928 and that we have talked for 28 minutes? It's been fast. It has been fast. I want to talk a little bit about the show. Michael, time in my studio today. And we have uh, this camera, this uh, Sony AX33. And uh, this is a really great camera that's going to shoot in 4K. And as soon as we can get that talking to the computer, the picture is going to improve. Not only that, what you see behind me is a black curtain. But uh, I have a green screen, and we're going to start using green screen technology. And uh, we're going to have some graphics going on behind me and other things. So the production value of the show is going to go up. And uh, we're also going to be conducting interviews at Disclosure Con at Pine Top, Arizona, on October 5th and 6th. So you can also look forward to some behind-the-scenes uh, interaction with that. Michael, with one minute left, is there anything that you would like to say to the viewers or anything you'd like to say as kind of a hello since you're going to be camping out here on the show? For sure. Well, just uh, thanks again. Thanks again for having me on. I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to being your wingman and your co-pilot on the show. Uh, we're going to have a lot of funny things in store for us down the road. 
as soon as we get the technical issues caught up, I mean, that camera is badass. We look great in the viewfinder. Don't you agree? Yeah. yeah. Uh, as soon as we yeah. can get it to look good in the on a camera on a stream, I'm going to really like that, that Sony 4K. Yeah, we're going to do some prank phone calls. We're going to do some other things with the puppet. And we're going to up the comedy factor. And we're looking for some comedians to get on the show as well. But we're Absolutely. still going to stay focused on that paranormal theme. So don't think that we're going to stray away from our mission or our topic. That's not going to happen. But uh, we have some great guests coming. Please stay tuned tomorrow night, 12 midnight, Eastern Standard Time. You'll find out who my guest is going to be tomorrow night. Because I don't know yet myself, but I know Sunday is going to be Robert Lindsay from Face Off Season 10. Thank you so much, everyone. Michael, thank you for being here. And uh, I appreciate everyone, your time and attention. Have a good night, and I will see you tomorrow on Saturday night. Good night. Be safe.